Hi, this is Jason. This is just going to be a short video to show you uh, some ways that I take data that is in iTree Streets, uh, collected data, and get it into a map, either in GIS software, I'm going to use QGIS, or in something like Google Maps. So I have a Streets project open here. The first thing I want to do is just make sure that I actually have some location data, uh, latitude and longitude data in this case, uh, in my data set. So I'm going to go to the Input menu, select Records. We scroll across here, and we do indeed have latitude and longitude. Uh, you'll notice that some of these have, uh, some of the latitudes have north latitude, some of the longitudes have west longitude, and then we have some that are negative and positive. We're actually going to have to change the ones with the letters on them uh, after we export, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So once we verify that we have that data, we can just go ahead and export it. So back up here to the file menu, export inventory data. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to leave that default name and this CSV that's a comma delimited file. We'll just save it as that file type. So we go ahead and hit that and the export will take a moment here. So my export finished and I have my CSV file here. I'm just going to double click on it and it should open in Microsoft Excel. And we're just going to have to edit those latitude and longitude columns to get rid of those letters and uh, make sure that's all correct. So in this case, I have relatively few, so I could go ahead and do this by hand, um, but you can also do it a little quicker in Excel. So I'm just going to highlight this column here, and then I hit Control H to do a replace. And in this case, I just want to find the ends, and I'm going to replace them with blank. And I'll just hit Replace All, and it makes my six replacements. Go the same thing with the next column over. In this case, we want to replace the Ws. We'll hit Replace All. Uh, there's one other thing we have to do here. So when we have west longitudes, and that's uh, everything here in the western hemisphere, those should actually be negative numbers. Our east longitudes would be positive. Same with, thing with latitudes. North last latitude should be positive. South latitudes should be negative. So we actually have to change these longitudes here. So I'm just going to quickly insert a column here. So we can just do this automatically with a if statement here. So we'll put an if. We're going to take a look at this value. If that value is greater than zero, then we want to turn it negative. So we'll just go ahead and click on that value again. Multiply by negative one. Uh, if it's already less than zero, then we just want to leave it as is. So we'll just go ahead and uh, click on leave it as is for the alternative there. And if we hit Enter. Looks good. It turned our positive 76 to negative, so that should be good. We can fill that down. Looks like it gets everything correctly. So then I'm just going to copy it. I just use Control C, and I want to paste it over here. So I'll just come over to this cell, right click, and we want to paste special. We actually just want to paste the values and not the equation. So we'll just click on this paste values, and then we're done with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on my column V here delete the whole column and we're all set to import now so just go ahead and save that uh, we just want to do save it as a CSV again so we'll just hit yes there and we'll go ahead and close and now we can open QGIS and we can actually open that file up um, and what we're going to do you can just go to the layer menu here we can add a delimited text layer that's what our CSV file is so you can either use this here or if you have this toolbar over here you can use it here so we'll hit that Add Delimited Layer, browse to where it is on my desktop, hit Open, you can see our data pops up down here, and it's going to take a guess at which one is your uh, X field, in our case that should be our longitude, and which one is your Y field, in our case our latitude. If you've got a different coordinate system, if you've got a uh, state plane here in the US, or you're using UTM coordinates, uh, you would just want to pick the correct X and Y field from there. Um, so that looks good. We can just scroll over, make sure everything looks OK, and hit OK. So I have a few records in there that have no GPS data, and that happens sometimes um, just due to issues with the collection device and things like that. So that's OK. I'm just going to go ahead and close out that. If you had a whole lot more uh, errors there than you expected, uh, you, that would be something you'd want to look into more.
and then it's going to ask us to pick our coordinate reference system. In our case, I'm just going to pick WGS84 because I'm using uh, latitude and longitude, which is a geographic system. And it seems like most uh, devices use WGS84 as the default. Um, again, if you were using something like UTM coordinates or state plane coordinates, you would want to go ahead and select that coordinate system. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And here you see all my data are populated. And we can go ahead, uh, in QGIS, we can actually lay this over a, a base map. And what I like to use is this Open Layers plugin. And this is just a typical plugin for you, QGIS so you can get from that plugins menu. And we'll just lay it over a Google Hybrid. And it pops our Google Hybrid layer on top. So we actually have to move that underneath our data, move our data above our Google layer. And now you can see we have our points on top of our base map. And we can do things like zoom in to see how this actually looks. And you can see our green points here, a little hard to see. Um, but, you know, they don't line up necessarily perfectly uh, with where these street trees should be. And that's just a function of the accuracy of the GPS unit. If you have some GIS skills, you can go ahead and edit that layer and move those points around to where you think they should be. So our next step, if you wanted to get this into Google Earth or if you wanted to get it into uh, Google Maps, we can just right click on our layer name over here and pick Save As. So here you can see we can save it as a KML. We can also save it as other file types here. If you wanted to save it as a shape file, that's there as well. Um, and you may want to do that since now it's, it's still just that CSV. But we'll save it as this keyhole markup language KML file. That's what... Google Earth and Google Maps can open and we'll just save as browse again to our desktop. We'll just save this as uh, iTree Streets Map. You can give it whatever name you'd like and we'll hit OK. And it looks like our saving has been completed. So we can jump out of here. So I'm just going to pop open Google Earth here. You can see our file is already on the desktop there. We can go ahead and open that KML file we just saved. And it's going to pop in here and zoom us to where we were uh, back in QGIS a moment ago. You can see it's the same sort of data layer. So now you have your data in uh, Google Earth. Another thing I like to do sometimes is uh, actually open this in Google Maps, and I'll just show you what that looks like. If I pop open Google Maps here. So I just went to Google Maps, and if we go to the menu bar over here and click on My Maps, and I think you need a Google account to be able to do this My Maps stuff and be logged into your Google account. We can go ahead down the bottom here and create a map. It'll take a second to load here. And in this case, we just want to import data. We could import a CSV directly, but we've already made that KML, so let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm just going to select the file from my desktop again. So yeah, if you want to skip that step of using QGIS, you can import a CSV directly into here. And again, you see we pop our points open on a map. And one of the things I like about Google Maps is that you can actually, once you have this saved as uh, in my maps, you can actually open this on a mobile device. You can also share the data. Uh, if you click on any of these points too, you'll see that uh, the data from our actual streets inventory is preserved in there. So if you wanted to know the tree ID for that tree or the species code, uh, any of that other information you recorded, you can pop that up uh, right away as well. As, so that's how to get your data from iTree Streets into a map uh, using QGIS, Google Earth, uh, and or Google Maps.